Thank mm-hmm. you.
for the opening him. The Lord has shepherd I not want. He makes me down to lie. The Lord my shepherd I not want. He makes me down to lie. In pastures green he leaveth me. The quiet Yeah. 
Sons of me comfort still. He lives, oh yes, he lives, he lives. I know that my Redeemer, yes, he lives, he lives, he lives within my heart. My table thou hast furnished every presence of my foe. My heaven knows me on oil and iron as my cup and mercy, goodness and mercy all my life shall surely follow me, and in God's house forevermore I dwell in place shall be. that you have never left us in the dark. Because in your word you say, the living know that they shall die. It is appointed only every man, every woman, every boy is unto girl, and every girl wants to die. But Lord, you have given us that assurance that in Christ Jesus, there is hope. For once we accepted you as Lord and Savior, when you come, no grave can hold our baton. So Lord, I ask that those who are here, they hear not my voice. Lord, I ask that you help each and every one of us to number our days, that we may apply our heart unto wisdom, unto right living, knowing that you will come and you will not tarry. Lord, I ask now that you send forth your holy angels to take full control of your table. Lord, allow them to stand at every door and every window so that everything will be done here, Lord, will be done to heaven's approval. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Please be seated. I want to make a special request that as much as possible, those who can wear a mask, please put on your mask. Thank you. The first lesson, first lesson, four, verse 13 to 14, will be done by DeAndre Robinson, friend, followed by items, Orlando Bailey. And you will use the law platform right here. Use that law platform. So we have the first lesson, first lesson, four. Verse 13 to 14, done by DeAndre Robinson, friend, followed by item Orlando Bailey, friend. We take it to order. Good morning, everyone. Brothers and sisters, we do not want to be uninformed about those who sleep in debt so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. This is a point of 
portion of God's holy word. Thank be to God. Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Orlan Billy, and uh, I'm a friend of Tony. I'm a friend of the family, actually. I knew Tony before she was born, I suppose you can say that. Because I, I knew Suan and her family when they were living on Barnet Street with their uncle and aunt. We interacted quite nicely. And as, as years went by, Swan came and, uh, you know, Swan played quite a bit on a netball in Mount Salem, which is where I'm from. And Swan and I basically were a team together. There are times when you have no clue what the next activity is going to be. There's not one court here in St. James or maybe Montigny, that Suwon has not played on. We all have played over the many, 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 many years. And I am here to represent also the, the netball group that we were all a part of. We, we trained on a Sunday evening, and if there was the need for us to train at another time in the week, we definitely will come together. If we could not find some other person to play, it was Suwon who we had to depend on to round up the rest of the players. So I'm saying that to say that Suwon will be definitely missed. And in my mind, Suwon has gone really too soon. I'm Tony, I'm sorry, Suwon. Suwon, you're in my heart. You're in my heart. Like a comet blazing across the evening skies, gone to soon. Like a perfect flower that is just beyond your reach, gone to soon. Born to amuse, to inspire the delight. Here one day, gone one night. Like a love of sunshine on a cloudy afternoon. Gone to soon. Like a castle built upon a sandy beach, gone to soon. Like a perfect floor that is just beyond your reach, gone to soon. sunlight on a cloudy afternoon gone to soon gone to soon rest in peace Tony Thank you. 
continue the program. Second lesson, first story, chapter 15, verse 51, 58, and that will be done by Luke and more family friend. Followed by remembrance, Keisha Campbell, best friend. So second lesson, followed by the remembrance. Morning, church. The second lesson is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 51 to 58. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and then shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this, for the corruptible must be must put on incorruption, and this mortal must be put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality. Then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is, is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. This is the reading for um thank you. Good afternoon. Abertitive Swiss, the sizes are only a few of our many activities that will readily come to mind when describing Tonian. And to the netball court, no one can that then she is one of the best center court players in Montego Bay. And Cider St. James, Tonian started her netball con conquest as early as eight years old. She has she has represents many high ranked netball teams in Jamaica and United States. The team has her heart through the Peace Setter Youth Club. She has represented the club for many, she has represented the club more than half of her life. And it's so very dexter, dexterity. And as only she knew how flyness, her infection, laugh, bubbly, 
personality and kindness will be missed and can never be replaced. No one will be able to encourage the team as she did. No one will be able to speak on matter of no one will be able to speak to on matter other would shy away. As she did her defense, we know no one will never be able to fill her void she has left. Our last game as left us with the best memories of Tonian, as the game is the defense, defense of who she has, who of who she was, and of the court. Even true, even though she has another engagement at the time, she knew her teammate needed her. She came and she delivered. Tony and on behalf of the sisters at Peacers, we thank you your inv invaluable contribution to the legacy of your club. We thank you for the many lessons you have taught us and we thank you for the fond memories you have left with us. Thinking about playing and not having you there, is it something we have ever thought or not do? We look forward to it. You are missed and will always be missed. As you have showed us throughout the years, thought we will play in the finest and the honor of your memory. Rest in peace, Tony. Thank you. This Montego Bay Celebrities Church is not a church that only preaches with everlasting gospel. One thing that we make sure that all the communities around this church, as much as possible, we help with outreach programs. Through our community service department, we help as many persons as we can in various different ways. So at this time, an offering will be collected in aid of our community service department. And while the offering is being collected, we will turn to the programs and we will use the hymn, The Golden Morning Force Approaching, Jesus soon will come, to take his faithful and happy children to their promised home. And while we sing in that hymn, an offering will be collected in aid of our Community Service Department. The golden morning is fast approaching. Jesus soon will come to take his faithful and happy to the promised home. Oh, we see the glimpse of the golden morning. Yeah. 
stand while we pray. Loving Lord, we are so grateful. We are so thankful, Lord, because you have given us an opportunity where we can contribute to your cause. Lord, I ask, Lord, that you will bless every person here, Lord, as they give. Lord, I ask you that you will provide for them that they will meet their financial needs and continue to give themselves and also to give themselves to you in total surrender. Lord, bless this offering that you will go to the furtherance of your cause. In Jesus' name we pray. Thanks again. Amen. Please be seated. We will now have the tributes and the first tributes is Packers Lit Ball Club followed by Nicole Trump Aunt. First tribute, the Packers Netball Club, followed by Nicole Trump Aunt. We take it in that order. Is those persons from the football club on here, is it? We will have Nicole Trump come and then in verse 2, the other one. She's not here yet. Okay, when those persons arrive, then we will probably have come in here. We will now have the eulogy. The eulogy will be done by Auntie Wendy, and I think it is a recorded one. So you can just use the microphone while you will hear that one.
At this time, we will be hearing from the man of God. In every dispensation of life, God has a word for such a time and season. Pastor Everett Taylor, the pastor of the Brentwood Circuit of Churches, is the one who has been chosen present that word. I ask now that you will give him your undivided attention as he brings us that word of hope. But before he do so, a song of meditation will be done by Brother Robinson. And the next voice in her is the voice of the man of God, God bless him.
remind you, I want to tell you that he loves you. The Bible says, John 3, 16, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. We serve a God who is not partial, like we are sometimes as human beings. We were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. We live in a world that is marred by sin. As a result of that, as his creatures, as his children, we stray from his will, we divert from his grace, and we break his everlasting covenant, transgress his laws. And therefore the Bible says in Isaiah 24, that a curse hath devoured the land. There is an escape hatch, there is an escape route from meeting the bitter end of the curse. And that escape route is to surrender your life to Almighty God. This world called Earth, where we're living, I can tell you it will not get any better according to the word of God. The Bible says in Jeremiah that the heart of men is desperately wicked. Who can know it? And things will eventually get worse and worse over time. But one of these days God will return and only those who have been a covenant with him, only those who have given their hearts, given their lives to him, will get an opportunity to live with Christ in the earth made new. So I want to say to all of you who have come by this funeral service this morning, make it right with God before it is eternally too late. It's a song that says, you better make it right with God. Come and do it now. For under the cross of Jesus, you can lay your burdens down. As a young man, who would have come to officiate at another youth funeral service. I don't know Tony Ann, I've never met Tony Ann. I've just come by to assist the grieving family. I want to say to a grieving family, I want to say to grieving friends and love wishers that the best place for your life to be is in the hands of Jesus Christ. And so I want to extend deepest condolences on behalf of myself and my family to your family. I know it's never easy to lose a loved one. It's never easy to lose a loved one. And even though as human beings we're separated and we don't always live like brothers and sisters, but in reality we are one family. The interrelated structure of reality says that we are one. And so whatever affects one directly should affect all indirectly. But I ask you to bow your heads and to close your eyes. Heavenly Father, for the next few minutes, speak a word to these, your people. Rest your divine hands upon my shoulders. Put words upon my lips. We're always thankful to know that the preaching of the everlasting gospel can never be by might nor by power. We're thankful to know that the preaching of the everlasting gospel can never be by intellect nor by charisma, but only by your divine spirit as we pray through Christ's name. Amen. Amen. And amen. I want to answer two questions, then I will take my seat. The first question that I will seek to answer is, what is death? And the second question I will answer is, what happens after death? I want to give you a time to remind you that no matter who we are as human beings, 
one day we all will have to die. No matter how tall we are or how short we are, no matter how slim we are or how fat we are, whether we are black or we are white, whether we are rich or we are poor, death is respect of, of no person. Whether you live in a fifth world country, or a third world country, or a first world country, all of us as human beings will all have to die one day. What is death? I want for you to understand that this place called Earth, in fact, it's a large ball that is spinning so fast around the sun that you can't even recognize that the earth is spinning. And I read something this week on someone, somebody's status held up. The person said, if the earth is spinning, why am I still in Africa? The earth is spinning so fast that you can't even recognize it. When God decided to make earth be a place for human beings to live, in Genesis chapter 1, Earth at one stage was a large ball covered entirely under water and darkness. On the first day of creation, there was only darkness. On the second day of creation, God formed the firmament above, according to Genesis 1. We call it the sky, and the firmament below, we call it the waters, the sea, and the rivers, and the lakes. On the third day of God's creation, he formed dry land. So for the first three days, God formed things. Then what God did for the next three days, he filled those things that he formed. In the preaching world, world we call it the elastic structure, form and fill. Whatever he formed on the first day, he filled it on the fourth day. Whatever he formed on the second day, he filled it on the fifth day. Whatever he formed on the third day, he filled it on the sixth day. So I told you, there was darkness on the first day. On the fourth day, God made the sun, the moon, and the stars. I told you on the second day, he made the firmament above the sky and the firmament below the waters. On the fifth day, he filled the sky with birds and insects and he filled the waters with fishes. I told you on the third day, God made or God formed dry land. On the third, on the sixth day rather, the Bible says in Genesis 2 and verse 7, I'm answering my first question. What is death? On the sixth day of creation, the Bible says in Genesis 2 and verse 7, that God formed man from the dust of the ground, then breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. I wish my son could get my mind to sound exactly like what it was something like when I just started. So Genesis 2 and verse 7, it says that God formed the man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. So a living soul is the combination of the dust of the ground and the breath of Almighty God. So all of us as human beings, we came from the dust of the ground and the only thing that matters is that God placed inside of our nostrils his own breath in order for us to be a living soul. Whether we are white or we are black, whether we are rich or we are poor, whether we are tall or we are short, we all be from the dust of the ground. I'm still answering my first question. What is death? Now death is the cessation of life. In other words, it's the reverse of life. So I just told you what life is. Genesis 2 and verse 7. When you put dust and breath together, that is equal to life. Now in Ecclesiastes 12 and verse 7, the Bible says, when a person dies, the dust returns to the ground 
and the breath returns to Almighty God. So death is the opposite of life. When a person dies, a child, when a person dies, a youngster, a youth, when an individual dies, whether it be from COVID-19, whether it be from cancer, whether it be from accident, whether it be any form of natural death, what simply happens, the body or the dust may return to the earth, and when we go by the burial, that's why we say earth to earth and ashes to ashes and dust to dust. I want you to understand the breath returns to Almighty God. I'm finished with my question. Let me jump to my last question. What happens after death? Remember I told you that every single human being will have to pass one day. Remember I told you every single human being will have to die one day. Whether you want to die or not, we will all have to die one day. None of us can outlive life. When Michael Jackson died, I was watching the CNA News with the Robinson. And one of his brothers was interviewed by one of the hosts talking about, reflecting on the life of N.J. Jackson. His brother said to the reporter, his brother said, My brother is bigger than life. I want for you to understand that no human being is bigger than life. We all will have to die one day. And the question is, what happens after death? The word of God tells us it is appointed unto man once to die and after death comes the judgment. Hear me, those who have come by this funeral service. There is a judgment that is coming. We all have an appointment at the judgment power of God. One of these five days, the last funeral service will be extended. One of these five days, the last procession will be extended. One of these five days, the last party will be done. One of these five days, the last of the events on earth will take place. And God, the Father, will say to his son Jesus, go and gather my children from the four corners of the earth. opportunity if they die to come up in the first resurrection and for those who are alive only those who have made a covenant with God will be caught up to be God in the air. Then pastor what will happen to those who did not give their hearts to Jesus? The word of God tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 that they will come up in the second resurrection to face death once more. Do you want to live down here and die and then at the second coming of Jesus face the wrath of God? I would tell you what the better answer is. The better answer would be no. And I want to say to you today, you better make it right with God. Come and do it now. For under the cross of Jesus, you can lay your burdens down. What happens after death? I'm still answering my second question, Job, in Job chapter 14, reading from verse 10, Job said, What man dieth, wasted away, man giveth up the ghost, where is he? Job, in answering the question, says, As the waters fail from the sea, and the flood decayed and dried up, he said, So man lieth down, and riseth not, Stop. 
said that those individuals that John is making reference to are those who have given their lives to God. And the question is, have you given your heart to God as yet? Have you counted the cost if your own soul should be lost? So John said that God will appoint a set time to remember him. And he says that God will call and he will answer. I stop by to let you know that better days are coming by and by. When we reach the city in the sky, the sorrows will be over and heavenly choice come over. Better days are coming and the better days can only be for those who have given their hearts to God. And so in my final minute, in my final minute, in my final minute, I want to say to you, you have come by this funeral service with a mind that is still working. You have come by this funeral service with two ears that are still working. Hear me, young men, hear me, young ladies, hear me, adults. The best place for your life to be, the best thing that you can ever do to your life is to give your life over to Jesus. And before I take my seat, I want to tell you what I told you before. You better make it right with God. Come and do it now. For under the cross of Jesus, you can lay your burdens down. The rest of your life is in your hands. What will you do with it? What will you do with it? Amen. Amen. I just want to say a big thanks to Pastor Taylor for reminding us the importance of making it right with God. At this time, I will be presenting the family members for the throne of grace. So I'll be asking the congregation please stand while all the family members remain seated. Rest of the congregation please stand while the family members remain seated. So I can leave you in the hands of God. Heavenly Lord, we ask to give it now that in your power and in your glory and through your precious Son, Jesus, and means of the Holy Spirit that you will write down in this place, Lord. Take full control of every family member here, Lord, who are grieving. Lord, you know the things that make them happy, you know the things that are known is them. Lord, I ask to take full control. And Lord, I ask you that you will bless them in their going out and coming in. Lord, provide for them every means. Lord, I pray even know that you will also forgive them when they have sinned against you. And Lord, I pray for the rest of the congregation that you take us fully in charge, Lord. And that you will watch us. Lord, we ask so that you will provide financial blessings that our life be one peace and be in order. Lord, send for the holy angels as we travel to the place of interment. Lord, I pray that everything will be done peacefully, ordered, so that your name can be glorified all things we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Please listen to the following announcements at the singing of the recessional hymn. While this is the first time that the platform what we leave, the eyes and entrance and then probably many family members then the rest of the congregation. So all bearers, please take up your position. All all bearers, please take up your position as we conclude this dancing and service.